I will call your attention to the front, and I will have you stop talking for a moment. And then I'll get you all talking again. Sorry about that. Um, hello, good morning, welcome. Um, this is Blockchain at the Edge, day two. Uh, my name is Hadassa Damian. I'm a facilitator with Consensus. Um, I, we will talk at you for as short a time as possible so that you can talk to each other. Um, what we started with yesterday was a two and a half hour session where we had about 50, 60 people through the room um, thinking through some uh, specific ideas, use cases, and information around um, uh, instances where we might use blockchain for social impact or um, as like American scholar Bell Hooks says, moving the margin to the center. Um, so thinking about instances of where we're going to use blockchain that might be for people who experience marginalization, but actually making that the center, the focus of what we're doing, as opposed to an edge, right? So what we're going to do real quick is we are going to orient you all to where we left off yesterday. We're going to break into groups by interest area so you can keep um, sharing with each other. We will also have a other new interest area if anything that we were working on doesn't interest you. Um, we're going to have a little time for thinking, um, ideation, things like that. And then we're going to share back as a group. And the goal of what we're doing over the week is to like build on each other's thinking and uh, grow our learning collectively. So I will invite somebody. I can talk who was in who was in this group to talk about where the ideas around um, finance and like financial autonomy landed yesterday. Okay. Okay, what we did yesterday is, um, so I'm Tessie Meirain, um, I'm also at Consensus, and um, I'm also with Women in Blockchain. Um, anyways, um, so on this, uh, in this area we talked about uh, financial issues and how we can resolve them and what they might be, right? And so, we ended up um, zooming in on um, the uh, uh, two main issues that came up. One being uh, access, not having financial access. For example, let's say in, in Kenya, um, somebody was here who was talking about a project uh, helping people by creating circular economies. So that would mean creating access for people who otherwise wouldn't have access um, by uh, providing basically a tokenization of assets and but then making them liquid, right? Being able to exchange them uh, by having a token and, and that way you could exchange them. Um, and that token wouldn't come from like, wouldn't have to be paid for, um, so therefore it's creating a value chain that didn't exist before. Um, versus um, a, uh, another issue in financial, uh, in the financial category being for example, countries in financial crisis um, where the money is devalued, so what you have is, is going away, and also um, uh, countries under sanctions, right? You earn, you earn your money and somehow you have no control over it. So that ended up being, um, the, the main topics were being about ownership and um, access, right? And so um, one of the, the learnings was that in, in some ways, the proposed solution to create uh, liquidity, uh, it was kind of like everybody becomes their own little central bank, could be, when it's scared, be the old system, right? And this would actually be exactly what we're trying to, um, you know, find alternatives for. While, on the other hand, um, you know, creating uh, a system like, let's say, for example, Bitcoin, um, to be able to maintain control over your finances uh, could also prevent access. So this is where we landed at the very end, that we had these two topics around finance and that potentially the, the solution for one part of the problem could uh, recreate the old system and the solution for the other part of the problem uh, could maintain uh, the, the original problem. And so we haven't gotten further than that, but um, we also came up with a couple of um, ideas that have to be uh, requirements and, and there were like uh, features like being permissionless, being tamper-proof, being trustless, being accessible, um, being global and um, building an ecosystem and providing interoperability. So anybody um, who is go interested in, in this area uh, later should, uh, should join on this side. Um, 
Thank you. I'll go back to All right. Thank you, Tessie. All right, so for folks who are just joining us, welcome, welcome. We are orienting to where we left off with our problems and ideas yesterday, and we're going to get you into working groups in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to hand you over to Elise, who will talk a little bit about another problem area we were working on. Hi, I'm Leeks Kellett. Um, so yesterday, same as Tessie was saying, the very small problem we were trying to solve for was uh, ID, lack of IDs, and decentralized identities in general. Not a small problem, very, very hard to um, start to a solution against that, but um, we synthesized it down to a couple of areas, um, and they are undocumented migrants, refugee and asylum seekers need protected, verifiable, transferable identification because of access to social services, formal work, and protection are contingent on an ID. So that was the problem statement we came up with. And the second one we came up with was communities without the ability to own IDs. So this is children, elders, mentally ill, sick, um, need the ability to determine who is responsible for and able to act on behalf of them um, and their ID because these people are the most vulnerable. So again, vulnerable communities that need to be centered and thus on the edge. So we, we got this uh, topical, like we, we grouped around this topic. There's other issues here. Again, if you're kind of an ID person, personally I'm more of like a track and trace permanence. <coughs> person, but no one wanted to do that yesterday, <laughs> and so I ended up with ID, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so, have fun partying with me over here. Cool. Thank you, Elise. Um, the final issue area that we kind of jammed on yesterday was um, on uh, governance, but in particular thinking about like co-ops as DAOs, question mark, right? It's like using a really grounded example of um, cooperative businesses as decentralized autonomous organizations. Um, some of our big ideas were around what it meant to allocate scarce public resources fairly, how we would, welcome, welcome, um, how we could impact the supply chain positively, um, and how we might uh, combat, combat corruption um, and monopolies to help small businesses and to help individuals who are trying to start small businesses. Um, okay. <coughs> So uh, one of the problem statements that we landed on, let's see if I can read it from here, um, farmers and co-op need a method to distribute value from its fields efficiently and fairly because often smaller farmers are not treated fairly. There's a problem, right? And then we also pulled back and had a few more abstracted problem statements around decision makers or leaders in organizations needing to be able to make um, decisions in ways that are transparent, right? Sorry about that. So if you want to think about how cooperatives and how governance might support small businesses being more efficient and fair for small business owners, you would jam over here. You'll see that we have a fourth area, right? Again, we're talking about decision making in small business and governance for co-ops or IDs or um, financial control and ownership are currently doesn't appeal to you, you are going to go to the other area and we will generate topics there. So in a moment, when I say go, you're all going to stand up and move and find a seat or bring over a seat with you into the area that you would like to talk about and work on for the next 40 minutes or so. <laughs> So again, is everybody have, clear on every one of the topics? Because I know some of you came in late. Um, financial is uh, related to uh, financial accessibility uh, and ma maintaining the assets you have. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So, financial accessibility, governance, um, and cooperative organizations, <coughs> ID, um, and uh, like positive. Uh, digital security. I don't want to talk about any of those. Let's talk about something else. If you have a burning topic in your mind you always wanted to talk about and you wanted to get other people around, go here. Propose it. What about talking? 
So, so <laughs> they are related. You're totally right. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, financial is related to ID. It, they're all related. We have only an hour. Right. Um, so, so well, well, let's, let's so let's get people talking now. in groups. Yeah. <laughs> so on the count of three, you're all going to get up. So the purpose of what you're going to do in your group is you're going to look at the problem statements that were left and you're going to improve them. The problem statements that we have, we just came up with yesterday. They're not good yet, right? And there's so much more information that you, with what you know, your experiences, um, you can add to these issue areas and these problem statements. So that's what we're going to work on over the next 40 minutes or so. Um, because we know that we have built something that we as a group can improve on. So, everybody stand up, find a seat in the issue area you'd like to work on. <laughs> So one is 
This is talking about how you store the environment where you are in the Absolutely. Yeah. So, 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 this is like so the the difference is only different topics. And the example is that she talked about the way she's trying to really clarify the problem so that she has a lot of fun and fear into that. And the other thing is that you're going to go like, 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 you're going to go
we have now the, the problem in our borders with the Venezuelan migration, right? So all, all migrants are, are coming and they are not registered, which is a, a big problem. And um, what happened with uh, Rafi, these uh, Venezuelan migrants, they're, 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 they can join Rafi as a company, as an independent workers. So this company is actually giving them access to uh, get a formal job. And uh, this, this formal job is paid with tokens, with private tokens by Rafi. So they are a R A B E I. So it's a, it's a great example of accessibility to a private company, but still there there is some issues with them. The, yeah, the, the conditions of the work that they are doing. So great. Okay, so so what they saw that creates the. You access, uh, the access the create money, the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor, the the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor, the poor, the but it's good to have these examples here because I mean, right now it says everyone. But to make it more specific, it's actually well. Okay, let's look into um, funding without existing credit records. Basically, um, Okay, so you're talking about who is issuing the money. That's one thing is correct. I think that came up yesterday too. Who is actually issuing the money? How is that managed? When you talked about it yesterday, I think there was the example of like everybody can be the central bank. Uh, yeah. And once you get that, you can have that other part of the Something to think about. Um, uh, 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 u
eaters. And then we were trying to get a Like, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah